So the last separable equation we're going to look at is called the logistic equation. Um, you might have already looked at this one in the, in the first section of the chapter. Um, there we kind of looked at it in terms of slope fields, right? We didn't do a video on that. We didn't do videos for the slope field stuff. Um, but if you've read through the text, you've already had a little look at this equation. Okay? Um, so in this case, the independent variable is t. We think of t as time um, because this is an equation that's used to model um, populations, right? It's, it's meant to be an improvement over the basic exponential growth model, right? If, if this term is gone, right, that's the exponential growth equ equation. Um, exponential growth is not a particularly great model. Um, sort of in the short term, it might be good, but long term, it's usually not very good because most populations do not grow exponentially forever, right? At some point, you hit like a carrying capacity. You run out of resources, you run out of room, there, there's a maximum number that your population can reach before you start running into trouble. So that maximum is here, right? That value m is representing sort of the maximum for the population. And if you just kind of think about what the equation is trying to tell you, you can sort of see how this works, right? So you have sort of a, an, an initial growth rate of k and the population is growing, right? Um, if y is small, then, then this term here, right, if y is small relative to m, then this term doesn't really factor into the equation initially, and your value for y prime, it essentially matches that exponential growth model, right? But as y gets bigger, gets closer to m, suddenly this factor over here starts mattering more and more. Um, and as y gets closer to m, this gets closer to zero, right? So your growth rate is slowing down, right? And if you ever actually reach that maximum, if y is equal to m, well, then y prime is zero and your population remains constant, right? It stays stable at that maximum, okay? Um, so there's actually two particular solutions, and you want to be mindful of these because they're not always captured in the general equation, the general solution that you write down when you solve, right? So what are the particular solutions? Well, one is y is equal to zero, right? If you're, if you're population is extinct, it's not going to grow. There's nothing there, right? There's no way to reproduce if you have none. The other one is if y hits the maximum, okay? So we have those two sort of stable scenarios where y just remains constant. Otherwise, we, we expect y to be changing. Okay, so with the particular um, solutions aside, we can try to separate, we can try to solve as usual. Okay, so we're going to basically take everything here and move it to the other side. We can leave the k there, right? So we have 1 over y times 1 minus y over m dy is equal to simply k times dt, all right? Um, and now this bit here, we can rewrite. If we multiply this top and bottom by m, we can write that as m over y times m minus y. And if you do a partial fraction decomposition on this, you'll find that you get 1 over y plus 1 over m minus y. Okay? You can check. If you put this back over a common denominator, you get m minus y plus y. You get back over to there, as expected. Okay? So we separate, we integrate. So here we just integrate each term, right? 1 over y integrates to natural log, absolute value of y. Um, be careful of that minus sign in front of the y, right? When we take the antiderivative there, um, chain rule forces that minus sign to come out, m minus y, okay? On the other side, we just have kt, possibly plus some constant, right? Um, and now we do the usual thing like we did with the exponential growth equations where we want to, we want to rewrite this, you know, try to solve for y if we can. So you rewrite the equation. We can combine this into a single logarithm, right? Um, log property says log of a difference, right? If I have the difference of two logs, that's the same as doing log of the, the quotient. So we get y over m minus y. And if we take e of both sides, well, then we're going to get something that looks maybe like this. I'm going to call it P0 
um, e to the kt, right? Where that p0 is, what's p0? Well, p0 is, is, you know, kind of like e to the c, right? Well, plus or minus e to the c, that's where we account for that absolute value. And of course, we could also allow p to be 0, which helps us capture that particular solution there, right? Um, we can't actually capture y is equal to m as we have it, right? We'd be dividing by 0. That's, that's going to be problematic. Um, you can try rearranging this thing. It, it turns out you can actually solve for y. It looks like a mess, but you can solve for y. Um, if you clear the denominator, you're going to get y is equal to um, m times p naught e to the kt minus y p naught e to the kt. Move the y over to the other, move this over to the other side. And now we have 1y plus p naught e to the kt, okay, equals m p naught e to the kt. And now you can solve for y. So y is equal to m p sub 0. I, I, I use p naught to kind of think about like initial population. I don't know if that's actually a good a good notation for this, but that's what I had in mind if you're wondering why I chose that letter. Um, 1 plus p naught e to the kt. Um, so we can write it like that. Um, there's maybe some other further rewriting you could do if you wanted to kind of, you know, cancel out the that population or, you know, write, rewrite the constant in a different way. Um, there might be a little bit of, of tinkering that you can do. Uh, one other thing to, to ask about is, is, can we choose a value for this p, p naught, this p sub 0? Can we find a value that gives us this constant solution, y is equal to m? Doesn't look like it, right? So, yeah, at least I can't think of one off the top of my head. So it's important to kind of make a note of that and say, hey, we have this other solution that works, right? y is equal to m. And, and so, you kind of, you know, if you're looking at particular solutions um, for an initial value problem, you'd start breaking things into different scenarios. Well, well, what if the initial population is, is smaller than m? What if it's bigger than m, right? If you start out with a population where y is bigger than m, if it's bigger than that carrying capacity, well, what's going to happen is the population is going to decline until it comes down um, to the maximum, right? Um, because if, if y is bigger than m, that's going to make y prime negative, right? Things are going to come down, right? If y is less than m, this is all positive, things are going to come up. So um, all of that is sort of captured in this, in this equation here. And so certainly we probably feel like this is a better model for population growth than exponential growth. It's maybe not the best model, but it's, it's better than exponential growth.